trying to describe Cody, but if you're playing really well in training, he doesn't really talk to you because you're playing really well. There's yeah, what, yeah. what is there to talk to you about? And if you're playing really poor in training, there's not much point in talking to you either because <laughs> you know you're playing really poor. So who's he talking to then? No one. The person may be in the <laughs> middle. Hello, hello, hello. You're very welcome to The Hurling Show. Uh, my name is Dermot Ling and I'm going to be with you for the next 16 or 17 weeks, I'd say, for the Hurling Championship. Uh, delighted to be joined in studio by Mr. James Ryle, Kenny man, and uh, newly retired Padraig Maher, has turned pundit of late. Uh, great to have you in, lads. Cheers, Thank you. you. One, of the, one of the great things, uh, one of the big attractions that coming up here and uh, getting on the train this morning at 7 o'clock in West Kerry to come up was... The chance to meet some of the, the people behind the players, often I think like why a player plays a certain way and what they might be like off the field. Uh, I've, met, I've met you in a few different settings, but generally in the biannual beating that we get in Crow Park from Kenny during the thousands. But up in Galway then, up in Galway with the, the Railway Cup, you know, it was a real, uh, it was a real chance. I remember as a young fella, like you'd be, you'd be, you'd be hating Uncle Kenny, like you'd love hating Uncle Kenny and you'd think like we'd go across the bridge at the barrow and we'd be spitting out the window and you know, that was the way, we just, that was the way we were and the thing I hated most after those trips, I don't, were you in Boston in, in five? In, in Boston, you Boston you know, in five, in five? Yeah. that was a great trip and then up to Galway, which was a good trip too, you weren't in Abu Dhabi. No, actually, I actually remember in Boston we our bus got lost. Do you know? Do you remember? But uh, I think we had uh, there was two slots available for training in the field somewhere out there. That's there was, right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Maybe uh, four to five, and uh, we had a uh, three to four. But our bus got lost and arrived at four. So Munster trained in the field, and we trained at behind the goal. That's like right. Young lads poking around, losing balls in ditches, and yeah, yeah, very unprofessional, one monster like we said. Yeah, yeah, they were in the height of the profession. I remember that time, like with, with the with the Cork fellas in particular, like they were just a different breed of professionalism. Yeah. And I mean, you were there right beside them, but it was it was very different. John Hine was was on at Eddie, and you know, the lads were in the gym, like the Cork lads were in the gym on, we, on yeah. the trip. Like we had good characters. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was great character. We had great crack on them, but yeah, it it, it changed. Uh, I hated not being able to hate the Kenny fellas anymore because it was actually like you realise how just like how similar we all kind of were like and how much crack we could have when, uh, when we all got together like I think there's massive rivalry in all types of hurling in all counties but I think there's a great healthy respect there mm. when the whole thing finishes up and at all levels throughout yeah yeah Paddy welcome I Thank never I don't know what year did you start I was thinking about it before what was your first year I know I mean 2010 was I was suspended for the Allern <coughs> I think it was at the Allern quarter final I mean, it was a second round game. I know it was that introduced that year. We, he gave us a good beating in Tardis in the league in 9, 8. Would you start around 8, was it? Uh, maybe David in 09. 09. So, unless I played in Do we play in a league game? Mm. 09, 10. But we were definitely played in championship. No, in we, were down, we, were down in, we were down in Division Division 2 at that stage, we, I think we did, yeah. It was definitely a championship game in Tardis in 2010. Yeah, yeah, I was suspended for that. I'd gotten yeah. sent off against Galway, so I missed it. I was kind of glad as well to be looking on uh, for the subsequent 10 years that you played to not have to be running through the middle of the Tipperary defence. Like, do you know, I always found, uh, particularly early on in, in my career in, in the Wexford dressing room, like I found, ju- just, to, you know, you don't know in the hurling landscape, but in Wexford in particular, Damien Fitzhenry was there you know, one day and Adrian Fenlon and uh, Rory McCarthy and these fellas. And then like the following day almost they were gone. Like they just, they had disappeared from the dressing room. And I always felt that there was no kind of chance to acknowledge them. Like, do you know, to say that you were not just delighted having gotten to play with them or their influence on your anything like that, but like their influence on the game. Like they were lads who had a significant influence on the game, you know. And I, maybe I don't know what shape it comes in or doesn't come in for you, Paddy, but certainly looking in, like I always felt that there was, in any successful team, there's a kind of a heartbeat. I think you were kind of strange that way and that there was a few, but in a lot of very successful teams, there's a kind of a heartbeat, like a, a non-compromising line that's held and it felt like you held that for a long time with Tipperary. Now, I know you had great players around you as well, but like your contribution to the game was uh, was significant. Like, you know, it was... Um, yeah, it was like you're... There's, there's a legacy cemented there, like... I know what you're saying, though, as regards them kind of type of players, like, as well, because when I came in, I had Brendan Cummins playing, there was Owen Kelly, there was Declan Fannin, Conor Mahoney, there was Shane McGrath, all these players mm. that you looked up to 
uh, the years previous to that, John O'Brien, you know, there's loads of them there, and yeah, no, yeah, then yeah. the next two or three years, they all start to kind of just, you know, disappear, like, as you said, just one day they're here, and the next day they're kind of gone, before you blink of an eye, you're, mm. there's a new team, a new panel, and then certainly, all of, all of a sudden, then you're one of the senior players, like, you know, mm. and I said to it's gassed the way like players just go and you know you, you have to get on with your career and get on with your sport because you've always have something else to concentrate on whether it's the next training session or the next yeah, yeah, yeah. next game you don't even get to acknowledge you don't about, get to yeah. acknowledge I remember back in 15 Paul Kern who was you probably had hurled against him a few years James yeah. mm. like he he came in at the start of 15 and, and hurled the league I think it was and then just all of a sudden we came training one night and he just announced that lads I'm leaving I've you know he was he was finishing up like and then mm. Like that was it. That was dumb. We just went on and played the next mm-hmm. game. Like you were saying, Jeannie, here's a player that gave so much to the cause for so many years. Mm-hmm. And next thing, just one night of training, gone. And now he came back as a coach that year afterwards. But like, did he? Yeah, did he in 16? just came back for 15. Oh, 15. Just came back, give him a shake, hand it back, and like just like that was. And yeah. it was not made out, but it was just brushed away and then move on. Like you know, and it happens so many careers, like doesn't it? I mean, there's two. There's two ways of looking at it. I think the click anyway. It, there's. Brian Cody, I think, had a particular way with it, but sometimes I think, like, it for for closure, like it seems, I think, across the board in so many sports, uh, and it's not we're not it's not lost in us in the GA. Fellas who finish up, like, you go from this savage intensity for ten years, you're just out of it now, so you know exactly what they see. It's probably not even out fully out of the bubble of it yet because you're so you're so committed to it, and then all of a sudden that stops, and you're just kind of in a way like cast out like and sometimes I think that some kind of acknowledgement at the end of it to say fair play like you played the game you know you played the game well you held it well move on now with your life and, and you know move on to the next stage or whatever we just kind of it just kind of flitters away like and, and, and I don't know I think that closure that acknowledgement is, is is missing a little bit I don't know how you do it or if it I don't know who does it like it's not my job to do it for you it's some you know some like an Eamon O'Shea to say like do you know, fair play, like you, you did, you did what the, the potty marred five or six wanted to do, you know, as, as as a 25 and six year old, like you did it, fucking fair play to you, you know. Mm. Brian Cody, I think it li- seems anyway from some of the stories to be reading and, and hearing about, I don't know that they get changed in the telling as well, but it, he had a, a very kind of a clean way of saying, calling up and making no big fuss and saying you're not in the panel, you're not in my plans for next year and thanks very much and off you go and it was... There's something something that seems a little bit hostile in it, but there is also a bit of medicine in it too to say this is hard medicine. Like you have to, you're finished now, and you're gonna have to deal with that. And we're moving on, and and don't see too much from the outside anyway. I mean, it's hard to know looking in, but it doesn't seem like all the fellas that you know from that I'd know from the ten years of playing or whatever that they all moved on. Like they all moved on in a clean enough way. Like you know, yeah, he he had a tendency, I suppose. People think out there, I think that a lot of people were dropped off the Kilkenny team, you know, mm. over. But I think it was more of a, of a case where a player just didn't play for a year. And so they were a constant player for six, seven, eight, nine years. And then the next year that started, the league had started, they wouldn't play. Some would be in their position. Uh, eventually the championship had started. They mightn't come on. And then that before you'd know it, yeah, the year is yeah, over. Yeah. And it was kind of like the player knew himself, you know, that. I wasn't yeah. dropped, but I'm I'm kind of being ignored here, you know. Yeah, and, 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 <laughs> yeah. And it, it it was kind of a way of. And uh, how did it happen for you? Um. Well, it was 2010, as Paddy will, might remind us uh, later on here. But uh, I suppose I played a lot at the beginning of the year or beginning of my career, we say. So I joined in 02, and I would have said in 02 when I joined in, I I would have thought that my nine years in there, I would have seen all the changes nearly in the sense that. There was still a very old school type of. There was, yeah. That you know, stage, there'd be yeah. lads maybe not arriving for the league and turning up for the championship, and mm. you couldn't be last in a run, and you'd have lads behind you. There was always lads behind you, maybe running off a bit of weight, and there yeah, was a difference, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very. It, I won't say it suited me, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it did. It did, yeah. To be yeah. honest, you know, yeah. and 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 I suppose as the years went on, three, four, five, six. Um, and I was uh, probably a regular in three, four, five, and six. But uh, the thing just started to go to a different level with mm. trainings and diets and gyms. And mm. um, I suppose I could have left behind a small bit in that. And I, I just wasn't that type of, you know. And yeah, yeah. I was probably 36 when I copped on that stretching my hamstring actually helped it, you know. <laughs> but at that stage, I was I was do- done and dusted. But um, yeah. I suppose a lot of those players 
eventually became weeded out over a couple of years of O2 and 3 even though mm. you know like Kenny were lucky enough to win a couple of those All Ireland so it didn't matter if a player went if that you know it, there was mm. no one given out because why could you after winning an All Ireland mm. and uh, but as the thing went on then even all the great Kenny hurlers that have moved on um, you know it is nearly only I'd say JJ Delaney went straight from a playing full back to off into the sunset where mm. the majority of lads got a spell on the sideline they themselves, after playing for so long, weren't happy as you wouldn't mm. be, and you know there was no, like I, I, I've always kind of not trying to describe Cody, but if you're playing really well in training, he doesn't really talk to you because you're playing really well. There's yeah, what, yeah. what is there to talk to you about? And if you're playing really poor in training, there's not much point in talking to you either because <laughs> you know you're playing really poor. So who's he talking to then? No one. The person may be in the <laughs> middle that he thinks that there's a little bit more in this guy that you know yeah, if we yeah, can focus yeah. on this guy, we can get him out. Yeah, um, so. I think like I think we can still see, and obviously I want to get on to. I mean, there's an absolute festival of hurling at the weekend, but I still think you can see the impact of that time, that oh three or four or five time, and how you played the game, and in, and how the game is still being played in two big decisions, which was how Brian Cody dealt with Charlie Carter and how he dealt with DJ Carey coming to the end of their career. I think at that stage, when you had. Henry Shefflin coming along, Eddie Brennan coming along. They were all committed anyway. Like, but your Tommy JJ, everybody knew if Charlie, who was in his pomp at that stage, and DJ, who was coming down a little bit, but was still the best hurler in the country, could be displaced if they weren't doing it. Yeah. And coming to train and putting other things ahead of it or whatever it was, I think that set up like the next 10 years. It seemed to me anyway at the time, that set up the next 10 years. Yeah. Like, it was like, it got very serious after that for you. There was guys turning up and they were getting the jersey and they were going out and they were playing and Kilkenny were going on maybe win the league final and these mm. guys were, you know, one of the top two and three players and how could they be replaced? So everyone then was beginning to gather around and that brought the best out of some of the other, other guys then and older guys and everyone wanted to play and surely, you know, slowly as the time went on, the penny was dropping with lads, I, you know, I'm not going to get to play here. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and people can take that badly or... But, you know, if I was being honest with myself and my own career in the last few years, I probably wasn't good enough when it came down to it. And, you know, you can talk about the JJ Delaney's and the Tommy Welsh's and the John Tennyson's and the Brian Hogan's and they're all across the half-back line. But at the end of the day, if I had been burning it up in Nolan Park, I probably would have been playing. And, you know, you'll often get a guy going, oh, if you were playing back then and, you know, yeah, yeah, this had yeah, happened yeah. And, and you'll hear, you, you know, sure, Parry's going to hear it for the next four years. Oh, if they only had you back and if yeah, they only, yeah. do you know, you're often a great I'm still here when, when I go back to Wexford, man. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Um, down in, down in, yeah, I, I wonder what it was like down in Walsh Park at the weekend for you. I mean, I think you're, you're, you're up in the, the, the nosebleeds with the, with off the ball, but yeah, like, are you coming out of it? Are you? Do you still feel almost in it? Like you know all the lads, you've trained with all of them. But you're, you're, are you still invested, or is there? Do you feel the step back? Like, um, I suppose it didn't really hit me at all till they actually ran out on the pitch before the game to mm. their warm ups, mm. because like I got into the car Sunday morning, and brought down a crew of lads with me from home. They were all going for pints. I thought you were going to say you were about the gear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wish, but they were going for pints, and I was driving them down and. I had my few bits to do down there, so I was kind of occupied, you know. It didn't really hit me then. I was above in the box um, with the lads there, and next thing the lads were now for the, the warm-up, and they got the roar from the crowd, and I was like, gee, this is... Then all yeah. of a sudden, it kind of, I kind of froze and said, geez, you, you miss, I'm missing this now, like, you know, even though it was pouring rain, blowing water for the, all morning, like, but, um, you know, that's when it kind of hit me, really, to be honest with you. But then straight away, you know, the ball was thrown in. I was like, every other supporter around, and... Uh, um, trying to re remain as impartial as I could for the yeah, yeah, for the lads yeah, and after yeah, all, yeah, but um, yeah. deep down I was I was still there as a temporary supporter and I was as much involved as any of the rest of them. Like you know, even probably more critical than a lot of the supporters were. Really, mm. like you know, was it that is it that clean for you? Yeah, because I, f I I I found and it's a, it's a source of it's probably a source of shame to be honest because I found when I finished in two thousand twelve and I finished be more because of injury and I was coming to like it was. I was 30, like, they still had a couple of years in me. And I trained hard enough that I knew I'd still have plenty of years from 30 to 33, you know. But Wexford started, we had been in the doldrums for the 10 years that I played, and all of a sudden, like, you know, they started to lift up. And, and, I, and I remember feeling a couple of games, a real egotistical, shitty feeling that I felt at a couple of games that I was like, like, almost like a part of me wanted them to lose, like, because 
I didn't want for them to have the success that I missed on. Now I don't know if it's different for you fellas because you because you won so much and I never even got into never even played another final like you know so you just miss those times but I always wonder about that for players because I felt it and I and I and I immediately saw it and I was like oh jeez how am I going to deal with that like where did that come from I've been a, a Wexford supporter all of my life and for the first time like this little bone just I don't know something came up and it was like something in me just was rejecting their success you know and I and I was yeah it was terrible but you just just went straight into supporter mode like or well I had to kind of because my brother's captain did he so <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't hoping to lose but yeah yeah uh, definitely if it, you know there was that bit of jealousy there that you mm. know the lads are getting to do this now someone might say to you geez, you're 33 and you've had a good run at it or whatever but like I still felt fairly fit and healthy as regards mm. you know obviously there was one or two things that obviously stopped me then but um, that bit of jealousy was there that oh, gee, I'd love to be out there now with the lads mm. and Mm. This is what it's all about. Like you're, yeah. you're trained there since January. This is what this is the, the days you do it. Like yeah. never mind the three or four months. But uh, but no, really, no. You'd be, you know, still liking to do well and hoping ah, yeah. You know I mean, mean the, you're the friends the with a, a lot of them, like you know, and yeah. trained with a lot of them there over it's the years. It's not. I don't think it's one or the other. Like you're, you're, f- the central part of you wants. I want Wexford to win. Oh, yeah, everything. Yeah. Like, but there is. You just feel this other part of you. It's like, jeez, oh, I didn't. I didn't realize I'd ever f- even feel that before. You know. Yeah. Um. What was it like down there? What was the like Tipperary? I thought the standout moment for me was the Jason Ford chance. Like I know they got the six and had a chance to go to seven as well. But I thought if Jason Ford had gotten the goal early on, Waterford were very shaky. There's a lot of talk about Waterford, and that doesn't suit a team like Waterford to have this expectation, the burden of expectation on them. They'd come from behind very well, but when there was expectation on them, that's where the doubts might creep in. Tipperary, almost the opposite. Like usually there is this huge expectation, but actually they're kind of being written off. So you think, right? Six, you got from four to seven points. You get that goal, the, f- the, f- the four chance. Great save, but great chance as well. Mm. You go to seven, Waterford are jittery. They're even more jittery then. Tipperary, a lot of newcomers coming in. You feel like that seven is oh, actually this is working and the dynamic of the game changes, but actually the save came in and they, and they yeah, Waterford kind of came into the game then. Did you, yeah, and I suppose I watched it back in the telly after just to see it again, but like... As regards the shot, like I don't think you could have asked any more from Jason. Like he was sticking right in the corner, yeah, and he yeah, got yeah. O'Brien got down to it. Like you now maybe one or two lads might say he could have brought it in a bit further. Um, you know, it was the, the hook was coming, like yeah, or the, the block the was coming. The coming top yeah, from like yeah. that stage, but maybe running straight with the bat. Yeah. That's the. I think you have to give credit here to the goalie, like for like, most of it. Like you know, it was some save down the corner. Like <laughs> we seen Aaron Galan's shot here later on the day, later on the day against Cork. Like he bounced in front of the goalie, and, and that was the correct shot. Like yeah. Jason was trying to do something similar, but. The goal just got down to it. It's a fantastic save. And geez, after when you look back at the end of the game, it was definitely the final moment because if that goes in, as you said, Waterford were under severe pressure then coming up to half time. And, you know, Tipperary would have got a lot of belief out of that. Um, yeah. And yeah. it just swing back the other way then, you know, it went from, as you said, it could have been seven, it was six. And, you know, Waterford got back to four then, heading in at half time. So momentum was with, uh, was with Waterford a bit. Mm. Were you surprised by Mark Yeo? Not really, no. I, Gene Marco is a nightmare to mark. I marked he, him the yeah. last year or two in training, especially when I was putting full back. And yeah, the yeah. way the game has gone now, and there's one and one inside, or, or two and two inside in the full back line, James played back there as well. You know, it's not a nice position to be playing no. there with all this space, and you're marking Well, not with the passes like. now outside, yeah. like there's one or two passes, and you've got a more open shot, like at the, yeah. the ball into the forwards. Every team is trying to deliver the precise pass mm. into, their for, into their forwards now, isn't it? Like it's nearly a 70 30 ball, or else no ball is going to come yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And Except Mark, Cork, who wanted to just play in the half back, yeah, line, like, <laughs> over and back uh, to see, or even back to their goalie. But um, yeah, but yeah, Mark, not surprised. No, he's been, you know, trending through that for a long time. You know, and especially going and training. But he's getting his opportunity you now on the team on the yeah. first fifteen. And you know, kind of like, reminded me of Callan and like I don't know, does he base his game on? I mean, it can't be a Tipperary full forward with an iron helmet and not be basing your game on a little bit. Like he has the look of yeah. The, he well, he's goal, tall. Like, he's he's power. He's powerful. Like he might look powerful, but he's too powerful and. The one thing about him is I actually kind of think he's a similar similarity to Richie Power in that he's just this mind frame. As he gets the ball, he's t- he's going to take you on. He's going to try and take mm. you on. And if there's one or two things to be critical to be kind of Mark is he probably took it too far a few times. He actually bet the man stay going to ball and he could have actually took a score, but he actually stayed going, ran into more trouble. Yeah. Whether it's, no, this would come with experience, but he could have just took his score after taking on the first man, knocked it over the bar, whatever, and moved on and, and went again. But... Other than, other than that though he's Mark one of the best full backs in the country yeah like, yeah yeah and he had a fantastic game so 
was a great. He did. Great Conte looked like. a lot shakier than he did in the in the league final. I mean, he was stupendous in the in the, he was just a rock in the league final. But he yeah. looked at the start, came out with a couple of balls, dropped him. He didn't. They, they, yeah, they were they were suffering a little bit at the start of it, like in the Yeah, mid. they made him. You know, they made him. I'd say they had him in the back foot there. You know, Ty De Borca wasn't as dominant as no, he usually is. No. Noel McGrath was was sitting off him, and that's another thing I couldn't believe that you know Liam Cal and and the lads. One thing maybe that. They would have seen Noel so many times over the years in club yeah, matches yeah, and yeah. involved Tipperary. They know and he'd done it for, to Brick Walsh a few years, you know, picking off five, six points, sitting off from the centre back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm surprised he didn't catch that a bit earlier. But yeah, I mean, it's the total opposite, isn't it? Like his the Borca sits back and Noel McGrath goes out, out, like, yeah. and, and that keeps it should ideally keep the centre back honest, where he has to yeah. he has to forego the sitting back to to mark the man. I think but Ty got a bit better in the second half. He kind of read it a bit better that you know he knew when to push and Noel. He didn't, and he was getting a bit more protection from him before. Yeah, as well, yeah. But, you know, definitely Noel was causing him serious hassle there in the first half. You know, he even set up. Jason's chance. Oh my God! What, Some a, f- pass, what like. a pass! I mean, wanting yeah. to see it, like, but yeah. the execution of it, like, the laugh, of, the laugh of it was perfect. Yeah, I know. You like, you wonder how you even seen on the pitch. Never mind if you're yeah, yeah, above yeah. A, overhead the field and, and, yeah. and you're looking down that you won't even see the pass that he gave there. So, yeah. um, but he's doing that for years. Like he is, yeah. he is. We'd expect it from at this stage. Uh, we surprised Aston Gleeson didn't start. Um, no, maybe I suppose with with, with the level of I suppose the panel they have um, mm. and. You know, there's as much coming in now, and we see over a couple of games of the weekend that the person actually coming on the field at half time, that lift was massive. Um, so often starting with, 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 I suppose, the Jamie Barron off and Austin Gleeson, the two of them, such an impact they made when they came on. Mm. Um, but, you know, they came from, you know, a period of where Tip were what, maybe six up, and then I'd say they probably done a complete swing where Waterford went six up. They were definitely five up. Mm. But, uh, Car- a tip show oh, great character. Five, it scored two five to two just after the yeah. break. Like, it was a phenomenal score. But tip came back at him again, then, and mm. you know, so it was. But like you know, and I was only just thinking back that if you look at the last, tip have won two of the last six All Irelands. You know, so <laughs> it's only a foolish man at right Yeah, it's strange. It's strange where they're sitting, isn't it? Like yeah. in terms of what people who like everyone's talking about. Waterford, I mean, it's obviously why they're talking about Limerick is that's well earned at this stage. Like, but I, I always feel Tipperary are, are are in the mix. Like, yeah, like Limerick won three All Ireland's, Tip won two, Galway have won one in six years, and yet you know there's a lot of talk on the Waterfords and the Corks, and until mm. they get over the line and get one one, and then they'll, you know, then they'll hopefully open up and kick on for them. Mm. Where are where are Tipperary at now after after that? What's like is is there is it hopeful? Is it or would you be Content with a view to moving on, or would you be concerned? Um, I think for supporters leaving, they were probably a lot more positive mm. than they were going down. Or if you're watching it at home the television, they're probably a lot more positive going to the game this weekend. Um, mm. like personally myself, I knew it was in the group anyway because I've been involved in that group for the last number of years. I've seen the players, you know, developing the younger lads. I knew the older crew that are there, they're well experienced. Like a lot of them used to there, they've a lot of the lads have all earned the medals and they're not even spoken of, like. Yeah. Um, you know, and there was a lot of experience coming off the sideline as well the last day. Um so I think it is it probably give the, the team and the panel a bit more belief. maybe that's one thing if I would say that maybe the last day, maybe the, the belief maybe wasn't hundred percent there because they're probably coming off a up and down league, a lot of new bodies, a few we had four lads making their debut, so maybe, you know, the belief wasn't maybe where we want mm. to be, but now I did definitely, you know, it was seen the last day that they definitely can say to themselves, she's very good enough here. Like, you know, we took our chances near the end, we could have drawn that, we could have won it. If one of the two goal chances Jason's only spoke about, or Jake Morris in the second half, yeah, that yeah, went in. Good chance as well, yeah. If that went if one of them went in, it could have been a different a different finish. So um a lot of positives going in, but a lot more confident. I'd say the players would be themselves playing. Well, against well, su- like that. That's that's a surprise. Like exactly as James talking about, you're talking about two All Irelands in the last six years. Like, are you surprised that the confidence isn't already relative? Like, should it be as low as it is? Like, there's something in the play against Waterford. I was like, Jesus, like th- these lads should be hopping a bit more. Like, uh, well, look, sure, for any player, no matter what, if you have four or five All Ireland medals in your back pocket, or if you've none, if you're not probably playing as performing as well as you can, mm. you're going to be low on confidence. Like, and I would have experienced that over the years myself. Like you could have had a fantastic year the year before and you come in one or two ropey league games and you know, people are getting on your back and no matter if you don't want to listen to it or don't take it on board, you're still going it's still going to feed into your wit, like, you know. So no, I think that's going to do tip the world of good as in for the team um and the panel uh from the last day for next weekend. But the massive game is clear now for Tipperary and it's for Clare as well. But 
more so for Tipperary now they know they have to go and, and take the two points and put them on the board because if they don't they're, they're, they're kind of relying on another, another results yeah, for the rest of the yeah. championship then aren't yeah. they like, so, that's, um, that's the hard part of losing the first game isn't yeah, it and Tip and Clare is biting off as it is so. it is yeah yeah. the the hand pass and I mean I don't want to go into bother too much but Kylie hand pass I, I remember I don't know who it was against now but I remember coming coming towards the end of my career and you'd give the hand pass kind of you you have it fairly well down at that stage and he never felt you were throwing it like but I remember being, being blown for what was it a clear strike but I, I know I had got the margins right down like and the referee blew a free against me and 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 I and I was kind of sure I was asking him why but I knew how he was saying she threw the ball I said do you want me to slow down the hand pass for you so you can see it is that what you want like <laughs> but it seems to be gone there seems to be right on the edge now like I don't know is the Kylie yeah, yeah, the chance yeah. in the second half, yeah. like it was fairly edgy, like it, it looked like throw, a, it looked yeah. like a straight, like the whole, you know, the curling or whatever it is for the have there was like a kind of a yeah. pull across, like he didn't seem to lose too much contact, well, like it wasn't a clear strike in action. And no, that's, that's what they're looking for. But I, I don't have any analysis done of it now. But I think an awful lot of the 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 throws they've been done right around the middle of the field. That's where they've been pulled up on. Mm. Now they're happening everywhere, but. The ref, it's very hard to call something on the 14 yard line if, you know, mm. balls after he hits 70 yards and you're supposed to call it. And not only are you calling a throw pass at that stage, but you're also disallowing a goal if it's the wrong call. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think nearly every every uh, foul hand pass I've seen now has happened within five yards of the ref size. They've happened in the middle of the field, mm. they've happened of an overlap. Yeah. And it's not the end of the world. Players are annoyed, but at the end of the day, the ref is right up on it. He's not making a serious call. Yeah. Um, but like, but you when know, you're Tipperary and there's a the ball's gone across and it's a clear goal and it's not yeah. blown, it's a different and story. You could see um, um, Morgan. Is it our Morgan, the the, the cornerback? Like Morgan. And, yeah. He was he was going with a hand. He knew like and yeah. You know the the umpire probably had seen it. It was. Yeah, it's a great thing to be able to throw hand pass the ball. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. But, uh, Would you give them more? Would you give the umpires a? Would you give the umpires more say in it, or like they're at an inside the twenty one, or like who? Like no, I wouldn't go near the like the VAR or the video now stopping at the see Did he? Because I, I just I don't I I I take the error because I know I'll be on the right side of the error some other mm. day. Like I don't I don't need to be I don't, it doesn't need to be right all the time. That's how I feel about those all of those close calls it's tough it's tough to suffer a, a close it's, call but you've yeah. we've all come out on the right side and we've all come out on the wrong side of them you know like I, I do probably think it was a throw I think mm. if, we were, if we were to go look at it but I still think on all those decisions the advantage should go to the person with the ball so you know mm. you'll see if a man breaks a challenge and he takes maybe five six seven steps and he's scoring with it DJ Carey eight eight yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. yeah just, just, <laughs> I haven't forgotten <laughs> what year 93 maybe <laughs> Um, but uh, you know th- those scenarios they're very hard it's, it's like a lad going up catching the ball in the air and and, and as Paddy probably knows himself you know you catch this ball I'm talking about him now not me but playing the hurl or I uh, know but you come out and you know you win a free and it mightn't be over free but you're being rewarded for catching the ball yeah, and, and rightly yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, I totally agree you yeah. know the goalie gets that little bit of an advantage as well and yeah look it would have been a big call to to not have the goal but it would have been the correct call I think and that's what we're here for but it's very hard to ref it how could you ref it I yeah yeah no no you wouldn't be critical of him for it it's only the yeah it's, a, it's yeah. just it's just, it's just a big call isn't it I think the team that's it's who it's against is obviously going to call it but like if we're if you're the attacking team there you're always going to say you get on with it like you take it but it's obviously if it goes against you then obviously people are going to give out but I don't think yeah you know, if that happened Tipperary obviously or during the defeat Tipperary you weren't going to you know, it's just the defending team really that's going to, I suppose, give out about the the refereeing decision. Like, but yeah, I don't think you can pick, you can pull it. Where, where's the referee in, in, as regards in the pitch in that yeah, stage? Like, you know, and but it's also it's also a factor. I think like it's sure. I mean, it's just the tribal nature of the game in in a way. Like, you know, how the one thing can happen on the field, and you've got two people in the stand, and one fellow will say this happened, and he's as certain as 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 ever he was that that's what happened, and. A fellow from the other team will see the very same event and say, no, no, I, what happened, I'll tell you what happened. And this, he's as certain as he ever was. So, like, it's, it's, tough, it's tough going to get it. He, he's just making his call, like, and that's kind of all he can and do. Like the, way they, the way he was, he was kind of facing us. So who's to say that Johnny Murphy was not directly behind Curran? Yeah. So he couldn't see. Or who's running across him at he the time. He probably didn't or, even see him, tr- even if it was a throw, he probably didn't yeah. see that the, the, the action happen because he was probably directly behind. Like, And that's what it goes back to your point. It's good, actually, because... 
the referees might be pulling the ones they can clearly see you know in the middle of the field yeah. or 10 yards or 20 yards away from the middle of the field but yeah, if you're yeah. if action's the other, other end of the field and the referee is trying to keep up the action the, the game's been moving too quick you're not going to ask him to gee like I didn't see that so I'm going to say it's a throw you're, going, you're not going to yeah. ask the referees to pull every decision there like. I didn't I, I don't know the stat on it but I'd say if you went between the two 45 yards lines in the middle there I'd yeah. say nearly every throw ball that happens yeah, has been yeah. pulled there and it's yeah. not that they only happen there it's just that's where they're being pulled I don't know yeah. who will get to find this that stat oh, yeah. I don't know who the character is but I know that <laughs> the insistence that some people have on statistics, look statistics, statistics in the game yeah. now the likelihood is, is they will have someone to look up, look it up like um, I a surprise coming out of the Cork Limerick game uh, that a lot of the points were about about Cork is about Cork's deficiencies more than I, maybe it's just it's what is expected of Limerick at this stage and just put it down as like hard training league they wrote that off they won one game whatever it was and now they're back out the championship form that we're probably used to but there was a lot more talk about Cork and and the style that they were playing than there was about you know how well Limerick were doing what they were doing how would you feel if you were a Cork supporter <laughs> today looking at some of the yeah. I mean, it'd be too harsh on them. I mean, geez, they're doing a lot of good things too. Like, you can't be putting investing all in a couple of moments where there's a few extra passes. But at times, like, yeah. Like, I suppose, first of all, I'd say is Cork have unbelievable hurlers on the pitch. Mm. If you take them pound for pound, each hurler, like, they're fantastic players. Like, I could list them off there. Colm Fitzgibbon, sure, Hoggy's well known. Shamie Harney's done great over the years. Like, keep going down through it. Like, you know, mm. young Jice there that's come into it now. Like, fantastic players. It's just like I sat in between the Cork crew in the league final against Waterford inside mm. Turles and like even at the start when they were some way tight they were still very frustrated with the style of play and I can see their frustration like and I kind of even got frustrated myself Sunday even yeah. watching it and enough from Cork you know of the style of play and fair enough that you have to hold on to possession you're trying to retain possession a lot of teams are trying to do it you know Waterford do it in a certain way Limerick or Limerick are doing it as well but they're kind of they're going forward doing it though. Cork are going lateral or going back the way a lot. Mm. Whether it's, Limerick might do two or three passes and then there's someone breaking a line mm. or there's someone. But is that on. it though? Is that is it the inability? Like I always think that with Cork, there's like they have an evasive kind of a style. Like they're, yeah. because they're so fast, they run around. Like but the game now has changed into like running through. You have to break the line. It's more that kind of rugby style of break the line, create the overlap, someone going with you. Cork are trying to go around uh, or they have been at least trying to go around or maybe they're just and that's the way they're training maybe that they're, that they're going around that they're not they're not breaking through like and I don't know how you that's a style of player like you know that's a style of player who can do that like yeah but they've broke like even Sean I don't know who broke out a few times the last day Tim O'Mahony broke out and next thing mm. they were away but then there was like I can't strike the ball in because either a lad's been marked inside or there's no movement and then or else I've been told by my coaches you're not Deliver that ball, and this is a 60 40 or 30 or 70 30 ball to, in favor of your own forward. At times, there, like Limerick came out, they broke the line and they were delivering a quick ball into the space mm. either side. And now, the Limerick lads are probably making the runs, the Cork forwards weren't, yeah, but they were still delivering the quick ball in. Cork seemed to be, I don't know, is it coaching or what it is, but they're not allowed, it doesn't seem they're, they're not pucking the ball in yeah. directly unless the ball is going to be a 70 30 ball to my forward and it's going to be in favor of the forward, whether it's you know, or else they're not making runs, but it's very, it's not working for them. Like, they've done it, you know, when it comes to... What's, ro- what, I, I, what's wrong with, like, I don't know, I, I know it's a, it's a style of the past in some respects, but, like, what's wrong with, sometimes I think, what's wrong with a 50-50 ball, l- like, launched in between two fellas? Like, you have to be banking that you're, you're at least closer to goal than going back and forth two or three times more. Like, you know, it has to hit a point where you're like, right, this, this just needs to go because we can't keep running back and forth here, which... Yeah, they were saying there's nobody in there, but there was there was one on one. Like Kingston was inside. Like I don't know why you can't just launch it in and let him let him figure it out. If he's not making the run, he has to he has to battle for it. I mean, if you can't win your own ball, then you're better off on the sideline. Like yeah, I mean, if you're not at the game, obviously you're not going to see what's going on during the pitch. As same as on the television screen. Like, but yeah. even Brendan Cummins said it in commentary on Sunday a few times. He said when Cork were coming out with the ball, he even said now Hoggy's inside one on one if they hit it in. Yeah, yeah. But they weren't hitting it in because it was like, oh well Hoggy's still someone marking him tight like, but if that ball spread five yards left or right of Hoggy quickly, mm. you know, it's giving him an opportunity whether it's, what happened was a suit limit down to the ground, the ball was coming to the middle third of the pitch over and back the field, it was giving mm. Limerick a chance to settle, tackle, 
overturned the ball and sure mm. I think there was a crazy was it 216 they got out with a total score from turnovers or something but, yeah, yeah, but Cork yeah. giving them every opportunity to well that's it they're the most effective and efficient team yeah. in the country to get turnovers and then you're giving them all of this opportunity around your own halfway line yeah. like to, to, to get it back the other thing I was frustrated with when you think about because sometimes I think there's fellas come into dressing rooms with styles of play that I don't think suit uh, certain teams like I would have thought that a little bit with even though there was a huge rise in fortunes with Davy Fitzgerald there was a technique to play and sometimes I thought it was at a cost to the Wexford spirit like you know I think that has to have its ha- has to have its day as well that Cork style uh, of passing the ball and running the ball is fine but like this is what I think sometimes styles of play I don't allow for is you've got the elements like you've got the rain you've got the wind and when you have the wind I don't know how it makes any sense to, to adopt a fully pass and running game like surely you have to have some kind of an adaptive nature to say right we're going to pop a few up like and put your best man under him inside and say like well let's suit the conditions whereas there's this rigidity in I don't know when it comes from strength and condition or these kind of professional coaches who are on the trail and they say oh, I have a system to play and it's like yeah the system to play but there's a thousand variables in the game of hurling like why, you know you can't it's not one size fits all like you know there has to be a balance and mm. it's do you know I suppose Kilkenny have been maybe accused at times of long ball the whole time, maybe the complete opposite and just yeah. drive it up and win it. And sometimes that can, I suppose, be frustrating. But, you know, there has to be a balance. One, you know, one system doesn't fit every single no, team. And no. one coach can't go around and do that. Exa- <clears throat> you know, if you have a lad full forward and he's six foot six and he's had to catch a ball, mm. you know, you poke the ball in top, <laughs> it's, you know, and, and you take Conor McDonald to Wexford, like you'd be yeah. driving it. And, and that's what happened. And that's what will win win games but you can't like I suppose if you take poking the ball long out to a half back lane and let's say you're losing it and a team sits back and swarms you and yeah. eventually it works up the field and the team gets a score you know that can be a nail in the coffin and you can throw it back down and do the same again and the same thing happens in another point and it's another nail in the coffin shall we say but what Cork seem to be doing is when they're tipping around across and back and back to the goalie and back and when it gets turned over like it's a dozen nails in the coffin yeah, yeah, it's the effect, the cumulative score. effect. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's it's the whole team. It's the it's the players themselves. It must yeah. be, you know, because you see the limitation of the system stacked up in one, yeah. and you know you have to do it ten more times. And it's not going to work. And, you, if five of those times, I, you I understand when you say if they're not in there, but they're somewhere on the field. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the right amount of players. It just has to be. There's a balance. Go along with a few. Go short. Do mm. it different. But when you're going back, and I was in. Um, Parky Cree for the league semi final, and um, look, I, I I've seen Cork twice in the last year with the All Ireland semi final and the league semi final, and both times they turned over Kilkenny, and but for periods of the game, and especially below in Parky Cree, Kilkenny dominated the game, but they didn't seem to have maybe the, I know the know how or the legs to actually see it out in in, in that way, but the Cork boys came in with a swarm, they got a late goal through Fitzgibbon, mm. and and they won it. I think Cork have the capabilities of beating every single team out there in this championship but I don't think the system they're playing is ever going to beat Limerick I don't yeah but like, I, think I mean look there's, at there's like, no point in playing it if you can't beat Limerick yeah there's no point in playing it I, I, I was say, like I was saying that to you today coming up in the car I mean I used to it used to break my heart yeah. like 2007 2008 2009 and we had coaches coming in and we were doing the same things we were doing the year before and I was like well Kilkenny based by 16 points last year we're doing the very same things what do you think they're doing they're probably doing somewhere around the same things so we can't beat them because there's no advancement here like there's no there's no like sometimes they wish they just go like way outside the box and say, let's try something completely different because trying something completely different is 10 times better even though it might be ridiculous and it might not work it's definitely better than doing the thing that definitely won't work I like, just can't get that the other thing is I don't know looking at just I know it's only I know it's only a moment in time uh, but the Kyle Hayes goal when I look at Mark Coleman at centre back and I know that sitting position that he plays and he loves to run and there's been criticisms maybe of his defending or whatever but Cahillan and himself and I saw this so often uh, and I didn't see it too often playing against Kilkenny because it's one of the it's one of the things you get right it's one of the basics of the game you get right all the time if there's two fellas going to one man and he jinx left and the two of them go left like that fella to me now, like I, that's that's enough. I've seen enough of him. I don't, I can't look at him anymore because if he's going to make such a basic error, yeah. what other mistakes is he going to make? If you have two fellas going to one man, one takes the left, one takes the right. Simple enough. What can he do? Whereas Callan went left, slipped because yeah. he went left. Coleman was already left. He was he had to turn and try and make up the pace. He had a little bit of a chance to get a hook. He can came in low on the right. He Hayes batted it in as he as he always does. Like but. 
I like yeah that little bit of that little bit of cuteness I thought uh, and it's 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 more than cuteness it's playing the game very well it's one of the simple things that's often not done very well you have to the, shepherd the most you, you yeah like it's 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 just too it's too basic to think for me to think that Cork can win all Ireland when they're when they're behaving kind of in that way in those situations I just think it's too basic I don't think you'd have done it you definitely wouldn't have done it we did it plenty but like you'd be you'd be frustrated with the fella for doing it because it's so it's such a basic thing you know well if, if you're if you're down training young lads in under 7 under 9 and under mm. 11 and you're looking at your you're always telling your guy to stand goal side of your defender you know and you said one left one right you know and I'd say if you were going to change that maybe both right but definitely not both of them on the <laughs> left and you know yeah, 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 you're actually yeah. turning them you're making them you yeah. know when he turned around he must have you actually see where he looked and yeah and then the straight through the fairness, whole and he slipped and, and you know but he slipped on the turn he yeah. slipped because he went left like he should he, he couldn't go left like I don't know but then there's a he was playing six Coleman like and he, in fairness he was, he was the last man back nearly to get the hook on Kyle yeah. Hayes coming yeah. through like but if you're six like the ball was played out to Kyle Hayes at the, on the side and his marker went with him if you're six and he was free at the time you, you'd well I was always ta- taught anyway hit straight back towards the, the goal yeah, do you know so yeah. you were another body between Hayes and the goal now we have to say as well Kyle Hayes is an absolute animal ah like, and yeah like I mean he, he will, does everything brilliantly take, he, a lot of people situation. can't stop him like we, we got the full brunt of a blow in the Munster final last year ourselves and he ran through us all like yeah. poor power but yeah, Coleman least, might have blocked him off but he still might have got through he but still through, is the but thing he might have been held him up another yeah. second and got, give someone else a chance to get back but I don't think you know defensively I don't think Coleman at six is He's, he's where he should be like he's a fantastic hurler he's he's a ball player he, you know wing back probably suit him a bit better but I suppose that's where Cork are caught at the moment for a kind of a dominant three and six yeah you know we say down the years they had fantastic ball players in the backs but they always had the rock and they always had Ronan Kern man in the mm. the middle of the pitch like you know and yeah. and then let the ball players around him but but like yeah a few basic errors like that and and but at the end of the day we have to say as well like Kyle Hayes is oh, he's, he's an absolute animal like and a pure athlete there flying through but again they could have shored it up a bit better Cork like the, there was a picture on Twitter going around that actually screenshot my phone yeah. yesterday morning after someone took it from the terrace was in the first half the Limerick end of the pitch was full with bodies with Cork bodies and Limerick bodies and that, the ball was obviously down into the pitch at the time the pitch yeah. was taken and the whole top end of the field which would be in the back the Cork line the Cork defence there was two Cork lads inside in the edge of the square marking the two Limerick lads Galan and could have been Kyle Hayes and yeah. the Cork goalie and there was no one from there to 65 like I was just saying to myself like if Limerick overturned that ball or a quick delivery there like yeah. you know Cork, Which is what they're banking Cork on. had no plus one defender yeah. you know back minded the house where, where was Coleman minding the house at that time Yeah. now that was only a quick s- snapshot of it but like yeah. it kind of told the story of it like you know where's your yeah. you know defendant Where's your your defending help in the full back line? Like if a ball comes in there, you know, playing the full back line, quick ball in there, so you're screwed. Like yeah, you know. Yeah. So at least if Coleman's sitting back, so they're a bit naive back there. You know, where's the man? Where's the leadership? You know, someone yeah. calling. Where's the goalie calling this extra defender back? You know, mind the house in front of the lads here. Yeah, let that develop out there. Like there was just that was another instance I thought you know, that, that kind of played out over the whole game for Cork that way. Like yeah. In in fairness to Limerick, they're five, six, and seven. They're always there. They're they're always at home in five, mm. six, or seven. They're fairly are. close to it. They don't go missing that often. Yeah. Um. They. G- I'd love to know what they're doing, Cork ways, hurling ways, coaching ways on their own field. Like I, I, I'd wonder at that time when um Kyle Hayes won the ball on the sideline. I think the boys were expecting him to spray it out the field, you know, or spray it across the twenty one, or because that's what they do. Because that's what a Cork forward does in training. It, yeah. it seemed like the last thing they thought they'd do was turn around and run straight at the goal and yeah. basically score it. And and Galan was being marshalled at that stage as well, the whole way back in. And and you know, I'm not sure who was it. I don't know who was maybe on him or but he was. It was, I think, yeah. But but he stood on Galan and he just waited and watched him go through. Where he had to go meet him and hop off him or hit him or get in his way or make him throw the Twas pass Twas O'Donoghue yeah, yeah or, surprised that he or, held or, his man or, like. or throw the pass to Galan it, you know Collins yeah. might come out if and there's get, one you know, more pass then there's one yeah, more chance that it might be stopped like you know the goalie might smother there's other things but you know I know if Aaron Galan you're not going to run away from me either and I understand the thought process behind it but yeah um, 
Limerick as Their much adaptability is phenomenal Limerick isn't it I, look, I mean li- geez, yeah. they can play the, they've lads who can play anywhere like. No and, and it's it's too harsh just to be saying Cork this and Cork that the yeah. Limerick, this, this Limerick team is you know their physicality their yeah. size mm-hmm. um, there's lads there that they're just I don't know they're massive in weight yeah. and height and, and the capability like the style the, the skill and the style you yeah. know the size of the man and the skill they're, and the style of him like after the weekend I as well they have so many ways they can play it. Like mm. they have Kyle Hayes in the full forward now they can play him centre forward Yeah, they can move Kill Lynch out middle of the field if they have to they yeah. can move him inside in the full forward line if they have to they can change it up like so many ways Groot Hegarty can go inside um, you know imagine him a two man full forward line and a ball coming in what Direct. did you do so what did you do when you were preparing for it last year like just phenomenal game like what like what are you how are you breaking down like in the video analysis like how are you saying right this is how we can beat Limerick how what did that what did that look like well I think the first half there we actually kind of played I think we played Jason out in front of Declan Hannon a bit um, off yeah. him and then we actually played one of the lads inside behind Declan so we were kind of we kind of played double a double kind of a centre forward for all the world and so we, the boys were playing Jason a lot with sharp ball yeah, I think he was getting a lot of success off that. As a kind so, of a link man in yeah, from and then coming out. You'd be kind of hoping that'll drag him out a bit. Yeah. And then you can go direct in for with another few balls. Mm. Like I think you have to turn the Limerick half back line around yeah. and have him facing their own goal. Now that's easier said than done because Limerick have so much put so much pressure on the players out the field. So if I'm playing at five, six or seven or coming out at two or three yeah, of the ball, yeah. you're under so much pressure, like. But that's where like you need to have, you know, runners off the shoulder, what we talked about earlier, that Cork were going lateral or going back. Like more often than not, they were getting the ball and turning back with it. Whether you need someone just to break that first tackle, and then the whole thing might open up on you. Yeah. Now, as I said, you Limerick are power for minutes. Easier said than done. Well, you look but at just someone like Dermot Burns. Like that's why when you play that system of the half forwards dropping back, one of the things you have to have is a capable half back who can do serious damage. Because then the half forward who's marking Dermot Burns turns around, he sees his man scored three points, and he's usually doing the link man play yeah. dropping back. But now he knows he can't. And so then their structure of the wing man coming out, the wing forward coming out, he can't do it because he's thinking, well, I'm getting the line if I if I keep going out because my man is just knocking over points for sport. Like so their capability in the half back line keeps the half forward lines they mark very honest. They have to they they can't drift back as far as they want to because Hannon can score from anywhere, Burns can score from anywhere. Like they're yeah, they're They're, they're very disciplined in what the way they set up like they, they don't change too much for play any team, like they kinda of stick to what they want to do, like mm. And we always hear at Limerick play the game in their own terms, which they kind of more or less do because their half back line don't really move too far. Like they might go up and for a score or two, but they're there for in structurally they're mostly there. Like the two midfielders are there, Willow Dunhu and Donovan there are working hard in the midfield. And yeah. but their forwards are coming out like if you see the camera behind the goal on Sunday, the ball is struck out by Collins. Hegarty is heading straight back. Two midfielders are heading straight back, and you even have Keen Lynch going back. So they're they're all going converging where the ball is dropping. Yeah, and then like they're going to have more bodies there, and they're so good. Then if they win it, they will play these little triangles. I think they call them down in Limerick. Yeah, yeah, short yeah. passes. Yeah, and if you're not coming with them, Hager team the lads are, are not. They're able to strike from distance and score. Or and if you do come with them, they just deliver the ball in. Then so they're making you work, but they're able to play it either way. Like whether it's you know other lads, if you follow, if you follow them out. You're going to have to go right with him, but you need someone sitting back, and that's where I was. My point comes yeah. back to Cork didn't have that. Yeah, you know. So um, where are the chinks? Do you see any? Do you see any chinks in Limerick? Has anybody exposed? I mean, he definitely did for long periods of the game. Like, but I don't know how sustainable it was over seventy minutes. But outworking them, I have fighting them, out scaling them. I mean, you just you players flash into your mind with each of those. Like they all work well, hard. They're all skillful. Yeah. They're all the, the the first thing. I know it sounds very uh, and. Don't want to say go back to basics, but you have to mark. Do you know, like how many times is Hegarty actually all on his own? Mm. Like, they get so many scores that they have lads in positions now. It's not that you know they're. But if you mark, you're they're dictating the structure of the game. That's uh, the that's the problem with the uh, marking uh, uh, system in a way. Like you, if maybe you're going to allow them at the start to well, dictate I, I, the system, but I understand. But if you're let's say you're wing back and you're going out and you're marking Gerard Hegarty mm. and. He scores a point, you know, he's one point got and you say, right, not another one. And then he gets a second yeah. one. You have to start adjusting. Something has to, yeah. you know, like there was periods last year where the Limerick half forward line would get six points from play, four points from play and seven points from play across 10, 11, 12. Yeah. And uh, you have to ask there, you've got to be responsible for him, you know, and yeah. I understand, but yeah. you've got at the end of the day to be responsible. And 
I don't think, you know, physical, I think if you went back to the semi-final last year with Waterford, they hopped off him for the first up into the water break, which mm. was massive. To, they, but you can't sustain that. No. You know, no one's going to run into, we say, the likes of Hegarty all day long and Burns and these guys and get away with it. So you've got to mark him one thing, but you've got to get a true ball into your forwards. And the more ball you get in, like, does Hegarty put the ball in, I think, for for uh, Kyle Hayes' goal? Yeah. The one we're talking about. breaking back, out from the half-back. He back was back on the half-back yeah. So... I suppose you need a forward line working really hard at that stage. So, look, I don't think there's a kink. There's definitely not a kink. Uh, maybe it's how good are Cork, I suppose. That might be the kink in the sense that, do you know, I think, is it Watford and, 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 and Cork next weekend? Or Watford, Watford and, Limerick. and Limerick, Limerick next weekend? I think that's really going to be one. Where Limerick, do you know, they've they got enough of it from Tipperary. You know, if they have any thoughts about themselves now, I think they might be grounded a small bit back yeah, down a bit yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Limerick, you know, say what you like in the league, but they had doubts. They had to have some sort of doubts. They, I know that everyone say they timed it and they timed it, but still there's a few people there wondering. I'm sure, you know, you could see Kinnerk and, and uh, Kylie after the game and they're just yeah. nodding. It's like, you know, but yeah, there's probably yeah, a small yeah. little bit like, oh, just thank God for that. Like, yeah, yeah. And if that, if that is the scenario, you know, they now are probably thinking, you know, and I'm a big believer of the kind of, I won't say the psychology of hurling, but, you know, it's very hard to perform after a really good game. And yeah. it can be very easy to come back after a poor game. Yeah. Now, if it goes really wrong, you know, it often it's hard to get over. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know, Limerick have now performed and next weekend will tell an awful lot. Yeah. Do you know, it's one thing there, you're talking about, uh, is anyway beating Limerick, but the, like, mm. Kilkenny in 2019, they like they had it worked out to tea, like they were just had as you said they were the four line working unbelievably hard, like it was mm. insane, like like we're, we're talking about Grod Hegarty coming out for the ball and Tom Morrissey, like they were being hit by if I remember Walter Walsh and John Donnelly. That's yeah. who they were meeting from yeah. the first tackle yeah, 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 in the, yeah. above in Crow Park. So Clark Clark don't have that physicality. No, like. I know again, look, every team is different, like and you can't go and play like Limerick to expect to beat Limerick, you know, you, you might you have to come up with something different yourself, but yeah. Kenny brought unbelievable savage aggression and work rate to that aggression, yeah. in the middle third and just tr- and won that battle and that won him the game, like, at the end well, of the day. If you take that goal we're talking about, Kyle Hayes and Hegarty's ball in, but Hegarty was all alone, pinpoint pass in. If you summon in his face, making it hard, making him maybe have to turn back to the other side, then the ball is not as, you know, it's more of a 50-50 ball that gives mm. the defender. Yeah. That game you're talking about, I'm pretty sure Conor Fogarty at number five, he scored two points that day where he was just sitting in five and the ball came up uh, from, do we say, the, the Limerick defence when they were under pressure and he clipped two of them over the bar. And he's not, he wouldn't be a known scorer, yeah, shall yeah, we say, yeah, but yeah, yeah, he was yeah. just, he was at home in number five where you should be. Yeah. The ball came to him, he clipped two over the bar in the first half and that was... And Dur- that, that's where Dermot Burns gets lots of his scores for yeah. Limerick. He so just holds his position. Half hour make, gone out. Yeah, gone out. Pressure put on yeah. either poor delivery or they win the ball back and it's recycled back out to Dermot Burns sitting yeah. in his position over the bar all day long. You know, and that's that's the equivalent there of what you're saying with Conor Ford. Yeah. He, Kenny just put so much pressure that time that back in 19 yeah. that Limerick were clearing the ball. It wasn't coming up. You know, it wasn't their it wasn't br- precise, the half back line, it wasn't like, precise ball that yeah. they always tried to give in. Yeah. It was coming up under pressure and they were but like that takes unbelievable effort and energy too, like, and not many teams are, yeah. as you said, they might have, they might have the physicality of it. Yeah. People talk about Galway, maybe they might have the physicality of it, but we, we don't know, we won't know until we see it in the championship against, yeah. if they come up against each other, but... Um, I mean, it's what separates, it's what separates good teams. I mean, I, we, like, I, I remember thinking at times over the winter during the league or whatever, I was thinking like, you know, I felt we were going okay, like we were going well even, you'd be thinking, right, there's something actually after changing here and we're playing a good style of hurling in the league, it's not as intense uh, and you're, things are working fellas are breaking the line they're giving the passes we're playing the half hour line deep copying your system basically and that's what we were doing but it was working and it was working well as soon as championship intensity came in and as soon as better ta- like I don't think people uh, it's very hard to grasp because I know a lot of players don't grasp it what intense tackling is in terms of positioning like your positioning of cutting off passes that <clears throat> nobody can see the pass it's just you you know that if you were in a particular position tackling with intensity you're cutting off certain options and it's it's just it's very smart tackling and not many players I don't think many from from kind of good players below don't have it good players to exceptional players they, they really have that that, 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 that ability you know and as soon as we came under pressure in, in against the more intense teams when we played Tipperary when we played Galway when we played Kilkenny 
something in the fellas and it is right down into the depths of sports psychology or, or whatever's in your belly going out like when you come under pressure the choices you make reveal a lot about your capability and you're, and you're found wanting that's what separates the good teams I think like when you get to that intensity and I think that's where Limerick are very much at home and Cork kind of found maybe an, a lot more and, and a lot of teams have found it against them as well that when you revert to type because you're under too much pressure the whole thing falls apart the systems the way you want to play everything falls apart because lads have gone into that they've that inability you know and, and, and I think Limerick if you know th- what we're forgetting as well or maybe maybe we're not forgetting but the experience they're gaining now in the last few years whereas maybe in 19 they were only getting on the road and yeah, they might yeah. Have been, uh, the but, know-how like but I think Burns got a point after half time you know after Cork hitting him for three or four points straight from the from mm. the throw in and I could see his hand he was just he was like mm. he was just you know they're, they're in such control and yeah. experience will bring him through as yeah, well yeah and like I'd say they would have finished up that game and how many of them would have been really, really tired or sore, you know. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. not sure. I think they were very much in themselves. So it seemed like it. Mm. The, the thing you were talking about, Paddy, I'd like to, I, I definitely felt it myself from the time of like 04, starting with the fellas I was talking about earlier, some of the, the you know, Adrian Fenlon and Dara Ryan. And I felt there was a non compromising nature in terms of what James was talking about in that come in and tell me about systems and ways of playing and everything else but I'm telling you that wherever my man goes I'm responsible for him and if he gets one point like don't ask me to not follow him don't like I'm responsible for him and and it wasn't even a question like they, that was what they were doing you know and it seems now and I don't like that going into oh, just the way the game used to be and all that stuff but there are changes and it seems like, you know, it came into soccer a few years ago, like zonal defending and mm-hmm. kind of allowing players to do something because there wasn't that self, there wasn't that, that, that responsibility for your player at the heart of the game. Like sometimes I think that is what hurling is about. Like it's like that battle. It's like the old delay coming forward, like the two fellas coming forward saying like who's, who's getting the better of who here? Like it's not a, yeah. there's the team game, but then there's also just the war between you and your man. Like, and if you're given any bit of leeway to let go of that responsibility, something breaks down in, in, in your own in, in the way you play the game and I thought that the fellas from 04 maybe because they had Griffin in, in 96 and he instilled something in them but they had a particular quality that I felt by the end of it was totally and utterly missing in probably 70% of the fellas that I was playing with that they didn't have that, that the thing you're talking about that responsibility like under no terms am I leaving his side like yeah. when it comes back to what we say like you take Ty De Borker for Waffer, for instance. Mm. Like he's a sitting defender. Most now he's uh, more under Liam Cal now. He kind of comes up more to his man a bit. But he does, yeah. Like I don't think Ty De Borker minds if his man clips one or two pints, even three pints. He knows he's a job to do of minding that full back line. Now again, Noel McGrath got three in the first half the last day, and then they kind of sort out. But I think it was more sorted as in Dara Lyons middle of the field for Waterford well, and the other. Yeah. Um, who else came on? Jamie Barron were, we're kind sitting of were, were sitting in that. Well, Jamie Barron's used to doing that yeah. with type de Barker too. He's he's smarter with that yeah, role. So like. it was like literally, but they knew they were in sync. That we'll say if Noel was dropping deep, well, Ty was calling Jamie. Yeah, he's coming yeah. to your territory there now. I'm going to hold house here, like, and I think that's settled off for a bit more in that first twenty minutes, of the second half, last day, and Declan Hand does it for Limerick as well, like, mm. like he. But he, can the centre back do it where the corner back can't? That's the like there is there's a hold and roll because that keeps shape of everything and that's fine. But if you're corner back, if you're full back, if you're wing back, like is there more more of that dual nature which your man is you have to fit your the only position that and in the back end that should be happening is at six really. Yeah. So, isn't it? Like yeah. every other man should be saying, Right, push up my man. So even if Cork done that with Coleman, yeah. The problem was the rest of them weren't pushing with their men and that's where Hegarty was getting the sharp ball, hmm. Tom Morris was picking up loose ball. Keen Lynch was coming out picking up the ball treaded through the middle of the field but if one man is holding which is usually your six like tied to Bork for all the world yeah. well, every other man has to be touched tight so the corner back could end up going out past the centre back marking a man but then he's not getting the, the short soft ball and you have someone holding holding but the house even if he's sitting there though he is responsible like as regards for someone to mark his man isn't he like you know yeah. he should be able to mm. call back a midfielder or someone you still have to take that responsibility not to let yeah, you know you can't yeah, just yeah, sit yeah. back and, w- and watch it, <clears throat> watch yeah. it happen. You, you talk about zone, and I played a game. I'm still trying to play. <laughs> but you're playing the weekend, are you, Junior? <laughs> junior E. Do you play zone? Do you play zonal in Junior? <laughs> 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 but but uh, uh, 
a few years ago we got a bit of an extended run in the club and we were we played a college team I won't mm. go into ins and outs of it, but we played a college team and uh, I was playing number seven. How long so was this now? Or it's two? only, I was closer to 40 than 30. Okay, okay, okay. Just recently, all right. <laughs> so, uh, I touched a reference in the UCD. Uh, didn't we, we, UCD played against, y- played against you and we played a Leinster semi-final. That's right, yeah. In uh, Nolan Park, Adrian Rowan was still playing. I, I came on as a sub that day with UCD. Yeah, no, that You was were disgusted we were in the championship at all. A lot yeah. of people were. I think we were enough to be. You did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you better but, say, you didn't mind too much. But anyway, <laughs> go on. We got over it. But I, I was seven, right? And your, your man was marking me, he was 10. And as they were taking the, the puck out, he just tore across the line to the far side. Mm. And uh, I, I just didn't budge, you know, because as I said, I'm closer to 40. But <laughs> I, I was always, I always holding you. would roar at someone else to say that there's someone coming. But 14 yeah. didn't come like a train out behind me. Mm. And the puck out was landed down. We won it, the ball went back in. But I always remember the 14 going back in and he looked over to the side and he goes, they're playing zonal. You know, they're playing zonal and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was just going, I'm playing wing back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing zonal. <coughs> but there is so much and you know Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. And I heard yeah. a couple of lads on to me that they used to go up and there were so many different positions where three lads stand at centre forward, two mm. stand at it, two in the wing. Do you know, and they all crowd in the middle and they spread out. And mm. Look, I don't want to go back to Stone Age hurling and say... Just, no, no, I, there's, I a subtlety to, there's a subtlety to the point that's important. I mean, you're, you're not saying it's it's all of this. Yeah, just, it's, it's a, a balance. And, yeah. and, and I know hurling has evolved and they talk about the role of a wing back and they say how that has evolved. But surely defending still has to be... Mm. Mm. Well, there are massive. values, like the systems evolve, but values don't. Like, I mean, I mean Brian Cody of anybody, and you've been exemplary of that, throughout all the time that he played like there are values that he came out after every single interview and he talked about genuineness and he talked about honesty and he talked yeah. about uh, respect for the game he talked about these things and those things don't change like they are ever present and they'll always be ever present like it kind of as he said himself like the spirit once the spirit is right you know the, he's not really dealing losing and winning then like once the spirit is right everything is okay like you that's, know and they're, they're the value systems that I think some yeah, that more tactical kind of we're going to win with tactics is like well, yeah, but you have the to have the values. It's the ninety or the ninety five percent of it, isn't it? And it is, the, yeah. the, you know the everyone running here and running there and all these other little bits and pieces that mm-hmm. go on in the background and you know that's the five percent and you know puck out drills and hurls up and this happening and but at the end of the day you know going out and winning ball and you know when the ball competes and drops on you you have to win it and you talk of. Conor McDonald's take his goal I know what we talk about but that was just pure yeah yeah he wanted yeah. to like win the ball get it up and he was he was being caught from every angle and yeah, pulled and dragged some, but some of the basics are still like you, you know, know talked basics back 20 years ago some of the basics are still yeah determination heart and soul, that, and heart and soul yeah. of the game at the moment like yeah. say Cork back in 04, 05 and 6 the team you would have played yeah. Like they were changing the game in Hurling, weren't they? Mm. With the short they were, passing, yeah. the running style, the new town challenge them style. Yeah. But at the back of all that, they still had Brian Cork on the edge of the square, like. Yeah. You know, so it was fine there were Connors and Tom Kenny and the lads running ball out the field and short passing, but there was still that out ball of right, if we're in trouble, Brian Corcoran is still in there and he'll fight for it and he'll keep it in there and there'll be breaks off from like so you, like they teams also can had a do that. Defense, hadn't yeah. they? Like, they did. Uh, John Gardner, defense, you wouldn't yeah. run through mm-hmm. any of them too handy. Or, no, oh, no. and you see Ben O'Connor. I'm only realizing it now. Actually, in in reading the few bits that I've seen of him, like, in the way that he sees the game, like he sees the game very simply, and that's in, that's that's no criticism. Like he sees things very simply, and he can see when when there's bullshit. Like you know, it's the yeah. lads are talking about zone defend mm-hmm. or whatever. He's just like. What are you doing? Like, you know, just do the thing that works. Like, you know, do it. And that's the way he played the game. Like, he just, he was fit, he was strong, and he kept going. Like, yeah. it was just, that was the that was the baseline. Like, you know, everything else on top of it, where you run, when you run, you kind of, you're figuring a lot of that stuff out, like, on the job. Like, you know, yeah. whereas I think when you've got the systems, you may be giving away a little bit of your own autonomy on the field and your own expression on the field to a system. Um, but it, I, But that goes very close to... That's the way it was, and you know the game now like is yeah. is more skillful. It's faster. The the the, the 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 it is still being played with great integrity. So it's not a criticism in that way. It's just yeah, there's a subtlety there. Like, but like just to fin on that point there, like we'll say Limerick, we can finish on it if you want it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but Limerick, Limerick do have their kind of system and style of play that's worked from now for four or five years. They're they're winning multiple Irelands, whatever it is. But they do still have that kind of that fight, and we'll say. Sometimes Declan Hanlon gets the ball in the half back line or Kyle Hayes when he was back there mm. and the, the crossfield ball is just going in like 
And how many times do you see Aaron Galan come in behind his man and catch a high ball or yeah. you know, there's still the basics of yeah. just yeah. get the ball into them. It's two and two inside. Get the ball in quick to them. They'll 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 fight, they'll win they'll win it. Yeah. You know, and even there the last day the camera went in on Mike Casey in the in the full back line. You're on about man and man and you know, standing up against man, I'll take you on, we'll see who wins. Himself and Alan Connolly came on, Alan Connolly who came on for Cork, the two were inside, but Alan Connolly was trying to do a run left to right to get away from him. Yeah. And Casey wasn't letting him. Yeah. And they went to the ground and you could just see the referee came in and Casey stood up to Connolly and was, you know, letting him know in under no circumstances you getting your way here today. And actually yeah. Sean Finn ran in after him and gave him the same mm. you know, the look, the bit of the chest was out, it was like, you know, they're still able to do it. They have their system and it works. Yeah. But at the moment, people question their hunger during the league. They're like, yeah, yeah. They they are hungry looking men at the moment. Like, and yeah. they can still do, you know, bring if the, the basics fundamentals. Back into the, the fundamentals, if the fundamentals are, there, are yeah. there. Like, and yeah. I, and it's those. It's more the values. Galway coming out of defence against Wexford that was noticeable. Like two maximum three passes straight in was working well for him in the first half. Yeah, I suppose your the added interest of Henry being up there and wondering how that's going to go. I I, I imagine anyway. Um. But they, yes, they left it behind them. They did, yeah. They'll be look. It's and that's it's it's a new thing with this championship as well, where where you know going to Wexford Park and going to Walsh Park and mm. going to Cusick Park, it brings a different dynamic to the championship. Yeah, and it's great, isn't it? It's great you know, to see the so, county grounds. Like but, I like but, the but, I like the local games. Like, but Galway travelling down, you know, uh, down to Wexford. It's you know, it's it's even just the logistics in it and the timing and getting everything right and that. It's it's yeah, it's, it's a turbo road too. Yeah. It is. There's no. There's no. <laughs> definitely no direct route down to it. But no. you know, coming out with a point like Wexford, um, I suppose Wexford before that were having such a good league, they would have come in and said that they wanted to win. Obviously, uh, in Wexford Park, that was a big one for them. But yeah. it felt like a Wexford win, it even did, though yeah. it yeah. ended in a draw. Um, but they'll be very disappointed, yeah, because six points up and they gave away the goal back to three, but they were still there, and you know. It, then obviously the free at the end was you know it's a big enough talking point and yeah that, that, yeah that could yeah. have put him three up and yeah. then you know I don't know the yeah there was a bit of gamesmanship early on I know they put the clock on at the Sunday game but I thought like you kick the ball around once or twice you can do that cutely you can get away with that yeah. delay but you have to be a little bit cuter about it, it was a bit obvious he was kind of. I don't know, like yeah, it wasn't a fair, it wasn't a fair reflection about freeze by the, ha- putting chins beside the, it or the, something, the, you know. The, the, no, it wasn't, and, and in fairness, chin did strike the ball when they were when they were shown the the analysis last night. Mm. You know, they stopped the clock when he hit it. Like we we'll say, uh, Cooney hadn't even hit the ball. There were still another going to be mm. another few seconds there. We don't know how much time before. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Th- th- there's a couple of things even on that. Uh, I suppose at at that stage, like the one thing that struck me was the ref came in to throw in the ball and. This reminded me of, you know, a Malin a number seven game where you pick up the ball and just throw it over your head and say, "Go on, lads, go after it." Like, yeah, yeah, he actually yeah. just ran in, just and like the priest throwing the game ball the, in for the other final or something. There was no such thing as lads field, back. Like. He just ran in, threw it in, the ball hopped up, chin had it over the bar, and then yeah. bang, one point. And yeah. the crowd, it was, yeah. If, look, if you were Henry Shefflin, you'd be, you'd definitely be annoyed because yeah. it's not a done thing either, is it? And especially not at that mm, time no. of the game. Um, but no, you have to be closing them out, like. The Kiladanga man who's down in, in Wexford, I think we're lucky to have him, are we? I, he seems to be... Yeah, he's, he's... There's something, and post Davy in particular, I've been delighted he's there. There's something very... It's an overused word maybe, but there's something holistic about his, his like, the players. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he's going to be a good influence, like... Yeah, you know, he's very... He's very, very well organised. You know, mm. everything will be taught out to a T for him, like, from the smallest little detail to the biggest details, you know, and... I suppose he's trying to evolve the game a bit. You know, Davey was a bit, I suppose, getting bodies behind the ball. I think he's going to try and mar- <coughs> marry the two with, you know, being having bodies behind the ball, but getting forward too and having more people up front. Like, I still even think the last day, Conor McDonald was was still, there was four Galway lads around him a lot at the time. Yeah, the ball was yeah. still been hit directly in. Like, there wasn't, you know, get Rory O'Connor up beside him or something. So I think he still needs to probably bring him a bit more forward that way. Yeah. Um. And Galway will deliver a few longer balls as well into a lot of space in their back line. So maybe you still have to think, take one or two of Davies' fundamentals of his yeah, game. You're building on one, one, one or two of them, hold on to one or two of them, but evolve it more. I think Daryl will do that very well yeah. when he's given a bit of time. And Yeah, I uh, think so too. Like I'm yeah. happy, happy we have him. Look, at, I know there was a lot of other games on. Kenny played Westmead, uh, Leash in Dublin as well. But 
Yeah, it was a, it was a busy weekend for it, so we leave it there. Uh, thanks very much for coming in, lads. It's nice to nice to sit with you and chat about the game. Um, yeah, we we'll, we maybe uh, yeah, it was it was uh, yeah, it was go, like going back to Galway now and sitting and having the pint and chatting about the game. Like, is uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll organise a little keg in here for the next day. Thanks very much. That's all we have time for. Thanks very much to James and Paulie for coming in, and uh, we'll see you next week on the Hurling Show. Thanks very much, Sloan. Mm-hmm.